24 Hours of Le Mans is one of the most legendary races in all of motorsport. Each year, the world's greatest drivers push themselves to the absolute limit across a full day of racing around one of the world's most impressive circuits. This isn't just a test for the cars, but also the driver's mental strength and endurance. The race takes place in the small French village of Le Mans and has done for almost a hundred years, where it's attracted some of the biggest stars in motorsport. But just how did this event secure its place in racing legend? Join us as we take a look back through the history of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Le Mans was the site of the very first Grand Prix back in 1906. 34 cars embarked on 12 laps around the town's public roads, with the winner taking the chequered flag after 12 hours. It wasn't until almost two decades later, however, when the head of the French Automobile Club was paid to devise a new race for France. He suggested something completely outlandish, a 24-hour endurance race, which was the first of its kind. The idea was that this race would give the manufacturers the chance to prove their car's reliability to potential customers as the automobile industry was really taking off. And so, on the 26th of March 1923, 20 manufacturers entered cars into the inaugural 24 Hours Grand Prix of Endurance. While the race was to take place in the summertime to maximise the number of daylight hours, the weather on that day was atrocious. It began at 4 p.m., just after a hailstorm, as a cold rain and chilly wind were coming in. That rain lasted for four hours, but luckily there were no major incidents and only three of the 33 entrants didn't finish the race. Andre Lagache and René Lenard took the honour of winning the first ever 24-hour race at Le Mans. The race then became an annual event, with car manufacturers from across the globe looking to test their mettle in the ultimate racing challenge. The French, British and Italian drivers often came out on top with the likes of Bugatti, Bentley and Alfa Romeo often topping the timesheets. It drove innovations in their cars and for the first time teams were focusing on aerodynamics, motivated by the long Mulsanne straight on which they could reach incredible speeds. Despite the huge popularity of the race as the years went on, it was cancelled in 1936 due to general strikes and the outbreak of World War II, which meant the track was used as a makeshift airfield, meant a racing hiatus for almost a decade. However, when the race resumed in 1949, there was a renewed interest from manufacturers to take part and more interest from the public to be there. The government helped fund new pit buildings and a thousand seats a restaurant for spectators to enjoy during the race, although some of the circuit was still off limits and it hadn't properly been cleared of landmines since the war ended. Italian Luigi Cinetti and British Peter Mitchell Thompson won the race, but it was an event that once again proved how challenging driving at Le Mans can be. French driver Pierre Maréchal lost his life as his brakes failed just three hours into the race, a stark reminder that when motorsport goes wrong, it can have tragic consequences. And this was the case six years later in the 1955 Le Mans disaster, during which Pierre Levey's car crashed into a crowd of spectators during the race, killing more than 80 people and injuring 180 more. It is still one of the worst tragedies in motorsport history. And it triggered the widespread introduction of more safety features, not just for the drivers in the cars, but also for the spectators at the track as well, who often weren't separated from the circuit by any form of barrier. The 1960s saw one of the biggest rivalries in Le Mans of all time, and it was an unlikely one. The Ford Motor Company entered the 24-hour race with almost no sports car racing experience. Their entry, the GT40, was designed with a sole purpose, to beat Ferrari, who had won every Le Mans from 1960 to 1965. While they failed to even have a car finish the first two attempts, it was third time lucky for Ford, who not only won the 1966 race, but secured every spot on the podium that year. And then they went on to win the next three races in a row, securing a quite incredible legacy for the Ford GC40. 
In the 70s, just after Ford's period of dominance, the race underwent some major changes. The first came in 1970, when traditional Le Mans starts, which saw drivers stand on the opposite side of the track to the cars before sprinting over to their vehicles to start the race, well, they were dropped and it was no surprise. The drivers were often in such a rush to get a good start that they would sacrifice their own safety. And this happened in 1968, when William Marese didn't shut his door properly. That resulted in it flying open during the first lap at speeds of 150 miles an hour. And as he attempted to close it, he flew off the track into some trees, suffering broken bones and sustaining head injuries that put him in a coma for two weeks. A few years later, in 1974, the Circuit de la Sarthe itself underwent some changes. Having mostly been held on the public roads around the French towns, more sections were added towards the end of the lap to challenge the drivers. You can see how since the first race in 1923, the circuit layout has really changed as the race evolved. During this period of change, a legend was made. Given its prestige in the motorsport community, the 24 Hour of Le Mans became part of the Triple Crown of Motorsport, along with other legendary races, the Indianapolis 500 and the Monaco Grand Prix. Winning one of these races is often considered the pinnacle of a driver's career. Winning two will secure your name in the history books, but win three and you can be considered a legend. Graham Hill had enjoyed a successful Formula One career, winning two world championships and taking five victories at Monaco. And during his time in F1, he entered the Indy 500 on five occasions, taking victory in 1963. That just left Le Mans. He'd entered every race between 1958 and 1966, with second place his highest finish in 64. After a five-year break from entering the race, he decided to give it one more shot. He finally took victory with his teammate Henry Pescarolo, making him the only driver to have ever secured a clean sweep of the Triple Crown. In the 80s, Peugeot set out with a mission, and that wasn't to win the race, but to break records. Specifically, they wanted to break the all-time speed record for the race. So they developed and entered the WMP88, driven by Frenchman Roger Dorchy during the 1988 edition of the race. He clocked up a speed of 407 kilometers an hour on the five kilometer Mulsan straight. And it was good news for Peugeot. They launched their new model 405 in the following years. And so they could use the record breaking attempt to advertise their new family car in a similar vein to how those original entrants of Le Mans in 1923 entered the race to prove their reliability of their cars to the market. However, changes were made to the track a few years later, and chicanes were brought into the straights for future races. While over the years many of the world's greatest drivers have entered the race, none have been as consistent, reliable or successful as Dane Tom Christensen. He took victory on his very first attempt in 1997, and was then in the winning car every year from 2000 to 2005. And he took two more victories as well in 2007 and 2013. His eight victories spanned three decades of racing, and he's never finished below fifth place. He's finished on the podium nine times out of his 14 entries, and he is considered by many to be the greatest to ever race in Le Mans. During this time, there's also been a real German dominance in recent years. Since 2006 to 2017, a German team has won all but one of the races. Audi took the majority, with the likes of Christensen, Alan McNish, Andre Lotterer and Timo Bernhard all at the wheel for victories, while Porsche won the race in 2015, 16 and 17, with Nico Hülkenberg, Neil Gianni and Brendan Hartley, some of the drivers taking victory. In recent years though, the race has been won by the Japanese outlet Toyota Gazoo Racing. Sebastian Buemi and Kazuki Nakajima have won all of the last three races, with Fernando Alonso a part of the team in 2018 and 19, and Brendan Hartley in 2020. 
But Le Mans continues to attract high profile races at every event, and that goes to prove its legacy lives on and its popularity is as high as ever. Fans continue to flock to the race every year for the ultimate racing weekend. During the week, there are events in the town, such as meet and greets with the drivers, walks up and down the pit lane to get up close to the cars, and many choose to camp at the circuit and include entertainment all weekend, like the live music stages. If you want to be part of history at the next 24 hours of Le Mans race, be sure to head to Motorsport Tickets and book your package for the next race as soon as you can. <laughs>